Trevor Bauer was handed one of the biggest suspensions in MLB history, lost over $35 million in salary, and was essentially blackballed from MLB. But is this fair? I know a lot of athletes that did a lot of things oh, 10 I, times worse. If their claims have any similarity to the claims of the most recent accuser, then this is bogus. Four separate people have come out against Bauer with claims of abuse. He's been in multiple lawsuits, but his suspension was cut and he has been reinstated by MLB. However, his reputation is so bad in America, despite MLB teams having the opportunity to sign a $32 million pitcher for the league minimum, they all said no. Because to them, the public outcry wasn't worth it. Instead, Bauer went to Japan, where just in the first few months, there's already been a public conflict between him and his teammate over a celebration. According to reports in America, Bauer has already been sent down to the minors due to poor performance, and news of yet another person making graphic claims against Bauer have gone public. Despite all of this, Bauer is still loved in Japan. There's a 70-story billboard with him on it. He set viewership records, his merchandise has sold out, and he attracted more fans to a game than anyone in the team's history. His reputation in Japan remains extremely positive, even after incidents like this. Bauer found himself in a close game versus the Dragons. The first runner reached on this play between the first and second baseman. The next base runner reached on this bunt. Bauer fielded it, but the throw was up the line. He bounced back and got weak contact. There were two outs, but the fast runner made the second baseman go to third. The runners were caught, but instead of the catcher throwing it to third to get them in a rundown, he for some reason held on to it, looked like he got confused, and then waited way too long to throw it to second. When he got the ball, nobody was covering first, and everybody was safe. Bauer started screaming uncontrollably. The manager came out to calm him down, but he just kept screaming uncontrollably. Finally, Bauer calmed down, got the last batter to ground back to him, and instead of throwing the ball to the first baseman, he sprinted to first and touched it himself, tried to throw the ball over the netting, walked to the dugout screaming f and telling his teammates to wake up, going directly into the clubhouse. This video was posted on Twitter in Japanese and was met by dozens of tweets praising Bauer. The same video was posted in English and was met with a ton of criticism by people who saw this as him throwing his teammates under the bus. However, only three years earlier, Bauer did something very similar to his teammate Joey Votto, and there was a completely different reaction. In a 2-0 game, Votto made this error. The Pirates went on to get a hit, then scored three runs on a triple and a wild pitch. Bauer went on to storm into the dugout, appearing to be mad and calling out Joey Votto for not making this play. Unlike the play in Japan, this play garnered barely any attention whatsoever, and the few people who did comment were praising Bauer for calling out the bad defense. This shows just how much Bauer's reputation has taken a hit over the past three years. However, Bauer was controversial the second he entered the league. As a rookie, he stood out by doing an insane hour-long warm-up routine requiring him to long toss up to 450 feet on the day of his starts, as well as getting a running start and throwing a ball as fast as he could at his catcher before the inning. His catcher thought this was pointless and would quote, end up killing someone. His team didn't seem to be on board with his methods and ended up trading him. Bauer shortly after released a rap song that was perceived by many as a diss track against his catcher because of a line that read, quote, you hide behind a mask to facilitate a task, but you don't know me. Bauer, however, says this song was not directed at anyone specifically. When Bauer went to Cleveland, he emerged as a great pitcher, but also got in hot water for crashing his drone into the team scoreboard, was asked to stop flying his drone at spring training, and accidentally cut his finger open with a drone before a start in the ALCS 
which caused him to bleed so much he had to leave the game. In one start, he drew BD911 on the mound. This became a story after people speculated that that translated to Bush did 911. Bauer says it was just a personal message to a close friend. He mentioned a college student on Twitter over 80 times after she told him he was her least favorite player, and he even used her pictures to try to expose her for underage drinking. Once again, there were reports of another falling out between him and his pitching coach in Cleveland who didn't agree with his methods and was eventually traded. Shortly after an incident when after a tough inning, he was taken out of the game and got so pissed he chucked the ball 400 feet over the center field fence. His first two organizations had problems with his training methods, but Bauer was vindicated, became an all-star, went to Cincinnati, and dominated, won the Cy Young, and that offseason signed with the Dodgers, becoming the highest paid player in MLB history. Bauer's time in LA ended up being short, but it was extremely eventful. But before we get to that, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Aura, the app that is saving us from spammers, robocallers, and identity theft. If you search your name, address, phone number, or email like I just did, you will be surprised that there are people online right now selling your information to anyone who wants it. Scammers, robocallers, and thieves are buying this and screwing you over. That happened to me when I had my bank account stolen last year, which could have been prevented if I had Aura, because believe it or not, all the data brokers selling your information online are legally required to stop if you ask. However, they make asking extremely complicated and hard to do. But with Aura, all you do is download the app, put some information in, and they will constantly monitor and take down anyone selling your information online, decreasing the amount of spam, robocallers, and identity theft in your life. They can also monitor your passwords and credit cards and will notify you if they're being stolen. Find out if any of your information is on the dark web and constantly monitor if your personal information is ending up online because that's how our identities end up stolen. All you have to do to get this protection is go to Aura.com slash baseball doesn't exist to get a free 14 day trial. Do it right now. When he got to LA, he began pitching with one eye open, started doing a sword celebration, had public beefs with Ronald Acuna Jr., Fernando Tatis Jr., and Marcus Stroman, not to mention past beefs with the Astros, Scott Boris, and especially MLB, who he called out constantly for blackouts, the Astros scandal, foreign substance checks, the shortened season, what cleats he was allowed to wear, and more. These fights gave Bauer more rivals than anyone, but he also had a ton of supporters, which came with his massive social media following. He was the most polarizing player in the sport, and in June 2021, he became even more polarizing. We do want to warn you, many of the details are graphic. Bauer was under investigation after a woman said he became physically abusive during a romantic encounter. Bauer's team immediately denied the claims. Graphic pictures of the woman's face that show injuries became public, as well as text messages released by Bauer's team that they claim prove inconsistencies in her story. But according to reports, Bauer was still scheduled to make his next start. One reporter says Bauer was on the field before the game with his vlog camera. But the very next day... Breaking news now, LA Dodgers pitcher Trevor Bauer has been placed on a seven-day administrative leave. Bauer was placed on leave but was not suspended, was allowed to get paid, and the league said they had not made any determination on the case. So many thought he'd be back after the seven days was over. When it was, he was placed on the seven-day administrative leave again and again, and again, and again. I promise you, Amanda, he will not be back in seven days. This is too serious an allegation. The Dodgers had canceled his bobblehead night, stopped selling his merchandise, and reports came out that his teammates unfollowed him and no longer wanted him on the Dodgers. Bauer himself stayed quiet since there was an active investigation, but in August, that changed. The Washington Post has just reported that Bauer was the subject of another temporary order of protection. Another woman had made similar claims against him over a year prior. Bauer broke his silence and released texts between him and the woman. Many of them were extremely vulgar, yet according to him, helped prove the story wasn't valid. That same week, the original request for a temporary order of protection that led to him being placed on leave 
was dismissed in court. This was a massive legal win for Bauer, but his paid leave was extended for the rest of the season, meaning he couldn't play. According to reports, people inside baseball thought he would never play again. MLB had been investigating for months and had still not decided on a punishment. And in February, when prosecutors had declined to pursue any criminal charges against Bauer, he finally decided to speak out against the original claims. But now Bauer's lawyers are firing back with explosive claims of their own. Bauer posted a video to YouTube emphatically denying any wrongdoing in the original case and shortly after filed a lawsuit against the first accuser. He also filed law lawsuits against Deadspin and The Athletic for what he said was misleading reporting on the situation. Bauer had been training and seemed to plan on playing once the 2023 season began. But once again, his administrative leave was extended. And about a month into the season, MLB released a bombshell. This is a landmark decision. It is the longest suspension of its kind. And it is a stunning move by the Major League Baseball Commissioner. Bauer was suspended 324 games, the longest suspension ever given under its domestic policy. And to make matters worse, the very same day. And now another accuser is coming coming forward. The woman told the Washington Post that Bauer crossed the line. A third woman came out with similar claims as the first two, and once again, Bauer released a statement as well as texts that he believed ran counter to the woman's claims. Bauer was already in the midst of appealing the suspension, and despite the new allegation, he had a sizable amount of public support. Unlike some of other MLB players who got a shorter suspension for similar things, Bauer was never criminally charged or proven guilty in court. But to MLB, this suspension was probably a no-brainer. Unlike most, if not all, of the other players suspended under MLB's domestic policy, Bauer had not one, but three separate people come forward. MLB may have been worried that more could come in the future. The biggest difference between Bauer and the others was that he draws way more attention. Partially due to his past, his personality, and his notoriety, Bauer's return would cause more criticism for MLB than any other player. MLB likely decided the back that would occur with Bauer playing wouldn't be worth it for the league or its teams. And MLB teams seem to agree. After an appeal that took months, Bauer's suspension was lessened to 194 games, making him eligible for the 2023 season. The Dodgers, who are required to pay Bauer, released him anyway, meaning Bauer was so controversial, the Dodgers are paying him $22 million not to play for the Dodgers. Since the Dodgers are required to pay his salary, that means all 29 other teams were able to sign Bauer, a Cy Young pitcher, for the league minimum. This would have been the best value deal in baseball by far, and every single team said no, because that's how bad the backlash would have been. Instead, Bauer announced he was going to play in Japan, where so far, he's had the complete opposite reaction. Bauer arrived in Japan and was officially introduced as a Bay Star, wearing jersey number 96, because according to him, he wants to average a 96 mile per hour fastball this year. It also may be because it's the closest number to 69, similar to when he requested a contract worth $6,420,969.69 from the Indians. Bauer also requested that he could wear number 69 for the Bay Stars, but they declined. During the press conference, Bauer didn't receive a single question about his MLB suspension from Japanese media. The only time he was asked was by AP. Bauer responded by saying that he wasn't suspended and that the reason why he was playing in Japan was because that was always his dream. During the press conference, they also announced that they were starting a Trevor Bauer fan club that cost over $15,000 just to join. The Bay Stars are allowing Trevor Bauer fans access to a Bauer talk event, a meet and greet with Bauer, which includes a photo and autograph session, an assortment of Trevor Bauer merch, an autograph ball in a special case, a game warm autograph jersey, a special Trevor Bauer fan club ballpoint pen, a Trevor Bauer fan club plaque, 
a limo ride for you and six of your friends to go to one game and sit in a special lounge with free food and also get two regular tickets to every home game that happens after May. All for 2.2 million yen. According to American reports by AP, Bauer's signing was met with, quote, little reaction in Japan. That doesn't really seem to be the case. There were posters all over the city, including one that was seven stories tall. His first game was in the minor leagues. Typically, about 500 people come to these games. When Bauer pitched, there were 2,600. Usually, about 5,000 people watch the live stream. When Bauer pitched, there were 77,000 people watching live. But it wasn't long until reports came out that Bauer had already pissed off one of his teammates who called him out publicly for being disrespectful. That was according to multiple American outlets and was referring to the sword celebration. When a batter tries to check their swing but can't and ends up striking out, Bauer does this. It started in America and some people thought it was a little much. And he went around with it, strike three, celebrates on the mound. It's weak. Bauer did this in the very first inning he pitched against a minor leaguer. He continued to do it, and when his first big league start was approaching, his team released a video encouraging it. When I get a strikeout, I do the sword celebration. Please join me in doing the celebration. His teammate responded to this video in a tweet that was translated and published by American outlets as saying, quote, don't be an idiot, that is disrespectful, there are better ways to go about this. In Japan, major news outlets reported that American outlets had translated the tweet wrong and left out part of the tweet, saying that Yamasaki was aiming the criticism at the team for promoting the celebration, but not Bauer personally for doing the celebration. But even if this tweet was directed at the team's Twitter account, the fact that he didn't want the team promoting it led fans in both countries to guess he probably wasn't a massive fan of Bauer doing the sword celebration. This tweet was soon deleted. The Bay Stars released a statement. Yamasaki released an apology saying his words were translated wrong and that he welcomed Bauer and even later gifted Bauer a samurai sword. A few weeks later, when Bauer started pitching in real games, his teammate did the Samurai Sword celebration with him. Bauer tweeted this clip and wrote, quote, but the American media still wants you to believe my teammates hate me and think my sword celebration is racist. After a few minor league starts, Bauer made his big league debut and it was madness. The seven story billboard was erected. Attendance at Yokohama Stadium was higher than it had been in history. According to the vendors, Bauer's t-shirt and towel sold out immediately and his name was the top trend on Twitter in Japan. Bauer took the mound, gave up only one run, and struck out nine hitters in seven innings in an environment that he said was more electric than when he pitched in the World Series. He was selected as hero of the game, was placed on the back of a pickup truck, and shot t-shirts at all the fans while being cheered well after the game was over. After that, his time in Japan took a turn for the worse. The only run Bauer gave up in his first start was a solo homer. This video circulated on Twitter and caught media attention in Japan when Justin Verland like the tweet. People in Japan speculated Verlander was rooting against Bauer, and a lot of people in America were. He had a rough second start, giving up seven runs in seven innings. In his next start, Bauer had what he describes as the worst game of his career, giving up seven runs in only two innings. He had an 8.5 ERA, and news broke in America that he had been demoted to the minor leagues. This spread like wildfire in the States, but according to Bauer, his team had a rainout that caused his start to get pushed back. And instead of having to wait 11 days to pitch, he asked his team if he could pitch a game in the minors while he waited, which was the real reason he went to the minor leagues. 
During this minor league start, he gave up a bomb to the very first batter he faced. This video went viral in America and was watched over 3 million times. Bauer held his opponent scoreless for the rest of the game in a successful start, but afterwards said he owed the fans, his teammates, and his team an apology because he felt like his attitude during the game was, quote, disrespectful to the game of baseball. Bauer returned to the big league club and got back on track, dominating hitters as expected, but on June 14th, the last thing Bauer wanted wanted to happen, happened again. A USA Today article reported that a fourth woman was making claims against Bauer, detailing graphic incidents that happened in 2020. Bauer is currently suing the woman for fraud in response, and his team quickly released a statement saying that this is yet another false claim against Bauer, saying this one specifically was a multi-million dollar extortion attempt that has been going on for multiple years. In America, Bauer was once again in the spotlight for the wrong reasons, but Bauer himself has yet to address the reports, tweeting out his YouTube video within hours of these reports becoming public. In the replies, you will see tweets in English criticizing Bauer, as well as Japanese tweets that translate into kind and supportive messages. Another star in Japan faced similar issues about a month prior when a woman made claims about him. He is currently waiting to see if he will be prosecuted. His team hasn't allowed him to play since, stopped selling his merchandise, and took down his posters at the stadium. Bauer's team haven't done anything. They say they already knew about this incident when they signed him. They haven't led to any criminal charges, so nothing changed. And fans in Japan seem to have the exact same attitude. He pitched the very next day through a complete game, was picked as hero of the game, and cheered. News of the complete game seemed to have instantly become a bigger story than the controversy from the day before. Bauer has continued his domination ever since, collecting NPB MVP for the month of June. At the moment, a return to MLB seems unlikely, but despite some controversies, his reputation in Japan is better than ever. And for now, that seems good enough for him.